So we're just going to discuss inverse here. And remember, inverse is not the hypothesis and not the conclusion. So it's the negation of the hypothesis and the negation of the conclusion, but the order is not switched around. So it negates the hypothesis and conclusion, but keeps the order. So once again, you're going to have if P, then Q. And what we're going to do is we're going to say not P. So if not P, then not Q. And that is the inverse. So we can ask ourselves a question when it comes to the inverse to, you know, check to see if it's inverse. Basically, it's if the hypothesis is not true, can we still get the consequence? In other words, can we still get the conclusion? So if the antecedent is not true, can we still get the consequence? Antecedent, once again, is the thing that comes before, like your ancestor, they came before you. And if we can ask ourselves this question, then we are looking at the inverse. There is one thing just to take note with the inverse is that it's not always going to be true. It's not necessarily always true. It is not the logical equivalent to if P then Q. So it's not necessarily true. And we're going to do some examples just so that you can see this. So you can eventually take note of the difference between if you use the inverse, the converse, and the contrapositive. So the contrapositive is going to be the only one that's logically equivalent. So let's go do an example or look at an example of the inverse statement. So we're going to look at the example of if there is an accident on the highway, then the traffic will be slow. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to put it into the hypothesis and the conclusion or the antecedent and the consequence so that we have it in its mathematical form so you can start getting familiar with it. So the mathematical form is if P then Q. So let's separate it into P's and Q's, the two premises. So or technically the two propositions or statements. So the first statement is after the if. So there is an accident on the highway is going to be our P. Then the second one is going to be after the then. So the traffic will be slow. That will be our Q. So we now have our if P then Q. So we have our if P then Q. Let's write that down quick. And we're going to be looking at its inverse. So remember, the inverse is not P and not Q, but the order remains the same. So if not P, then not Q. And what we're going to do now is we're going to rewrite it so it's in this inverse form. So not P means there is not an accident on the highway or not accidents on the highway. So there are no accidents on the highway. So we added in the no, let's add in the S for the accidents just to clarify that. So there is no accidents on the highway. And then we need the negation of the traffic will be slow. The traffic will not be slow. And let's just add in the not quick. There we go. So we have negated both P and Q here. So if there is no accidents on the highway, then the traffic will not be slow. I put the not in the wrong place. Okay, so we all fixed. So now I just want to again discuss the fact that the inverse is not necessarily true all the time. So there will be cases where it may not necessarily be true. And you can use this as an example. So let's think about it like just logically. It says here, if there's no accidents on the highway, then traffic will not be slow. Can you think of other reasons why traffic would be slow, which is not connected to accidents? Construction. Or just the case of it's rush hour. So everyone's going home and they all going in the same direction. So there are some situations where this is not going to be true. So it's not going to be logically equivalent to have if P then Q, then not, Q, not P tends to not Q. So these aren't logically equivalent statements. Okay, so we're looking at if a number is divisible by 4, then it is even. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break it up into the hypothesis and the conclusion or the antecedent and the consequence. So in this case, we are going to look at... 
divisible by four is going to be our, our hypothesis, which is our P. And then it is even is going to be our conclusion, which is our Q. Let's write that in the mathematical terms again. So if P, then Q. So for the inverse, it is not P implies not Q. So if not P, then not Q. The order remains the same. We just negate both sides. So we're just going to copy the um, thing across. If a number is divisible by four, then it is even. And we're going to just add the negation for the P and the Q to it. So if a number is not divisible by four, so let's just add in the not and color it in yellow to connect with the negation above, then it is not even. So let's just add the not there and again, color it in yellow, not even. And now we can just think about cases that fit this. So let's go with, for example, 31. Is 31 divisible by four? No, it is not. So let's write that down. And is it even? No, it's odd. So that one works for that statement. Let's go six divided by four. It is not divided by four, but it is even. And this is what we mean by when we say, if P then Q is not logically equivalent to not P tends to not Q, because it's not necessarily true. Not P tends to not Q is not necessarily true. So these are not logically equivalent. So just a reminder that your inverse is not logically equivalent to the original conditional. So once again, the inverse is not logically equivalent to the original conditional.